Okay, ladies and gents. It's time to look at the new patch notes. It's Wednesday 28th of June. Wednesday 28th of June and we have the balance update that happens on Wednesdays. It's the kind of patch where you have a bunch of bug fixes. Not fixing everything that exists, but a bunch of bug fixes. And also there's going to be numbers changes, buffs and nerfs. This is not like the Tuesday patches where you get like new hero, new content, new maps and big reworks. So let's see what Blizzard Entertainment has in store for us. As you can see here that the following heroes are going to be getting changed. Uh, Genji, Mothael, Thrall, Zeratul, Zuljin, Medivh, Probius, Bribing, Lucio, Tessar, Uther, Darka and Diva. And uh, we usually make a bit of a prediction about whether that's going to be nerfs or buffs. And then we'll see how big the changes are and then we'll say what we think about it. We are expecting Genji nerf, Malthael nerf, Thrall buff, Zeratul I'm not sure. Uh, Zul'jin, I'm not sure. Medivh, not sure. Probius, not sure. Brightwing, I would say buff. Lucio, buff. Tassadar, nerf. Uther, nerf. Dahaka, nerf. And Diva, nerf. One hero suspiciously missing from this list, which I think deserves to be included, is Anubarak. Anubarak's cocoon is oppressive at the pro meta. Uh, it has received uh, kind of a counterplay from the other side of uh, the other team in draft, which is uh, Li Ming. Li Ming used to be not very useful against Anubarak because of the orbs splashing on beetles, but Disintegrate can deal with it a little bit. But that's just one hero, and there aren't that many other ways to effectively, in a, the heat of a team fight, deal with Anubarak's shutdown. So I'm surprised he's not there, but maybe in some future patch. For now, let's see what the Nexus has in store for us. Genji is gonna get less bonus damage on Shuriken Mastery, 5 damage less. And if I'm just reading his kit and Shuriken Mastery, it says when you hit 35 heroes, you get extra damage, 25. It used to be 30. Um, okay, so... 5 damage less. It's going to be 16% less bonus damage on Shuriken. The base damage is 65. It's a small enough nerf. Apparently they don't want to ruin him. Uh, Genji's win rate at pro level and on ladder is not actually that high. As he is a rather difficult hero to min-max. And so I guess they were afraid to making him trash tier. I think it's a reasonable nerf. Uh, in the meantime he also has received a small buff to Dragon Claw. Does a little bit more damage and it's a little bit easier to garner the deflect value to gather up your Dragon Claw. And then Dodge, which uh, I had previously said is his most problematic level 7 talent, is going to have a 12 second uh, duration for the cooldown. And it was 8. And I said it should be removed, um, but what this does mean is, so Genji stacks up three auto attack blocks. He will negate three auto attacks entirely, and then it would take eight seconds to get one charge, eight seconds to get another, and eight to get another. So it would take 24 seconds to get everything back. Now it will take 36 seconds. It's a pretty big uh, nerf to it, I guess, but it's still pretty strong. Uh, however, you can say that it's more worth it to deliberately try to proc his dodge uh, charges with fast auto attackers like Diva, Tracer, Lucio, Zarya, Tassadar, and so on, or even anyone, uh, knowing that it won't come back as fast. It will, it will help a little bit, and you can see that they are light-handed nerfs because Blizzard and many people love what Genji brought to the Nexus, which is a high execution skill, uh, skillful hero. That, uh, you know, especially many other MOBA players that didn't try Heroes yet because they thought it was too casual. Um, they missed it. About one and a half year ago at uh, some of the bigger tournaments, you had a lot of Koreans in particular express uh, that they would love more high skill heroes in the game. And so, Genji, they don't want to nerf him to Oblivion. Is it too much? Is it too little? Is it not enough? Or is it just right? It remains to be seen. Knee-jerk reactions to this kind of thing is uh, common. What I can say is when I'm going to play Hero League a little bit later, I'm going to allow him to come through and see what his effect is. His mobility, of course, still is insane. 
and it is the best in the Nexus, but there is a hero in the Nexus who is the best at literally just about anything. I mean, for each thing you can be the best at, there's a hero that does it. He may have the best mobility, another may have the best global, another may have the best something, eh? the best single target healing. Just the fact that you're the best at something doesn't mean that you're OP. I suspect he might have needed a little bit more nerf, but I'm willing to see how it goes. I'm, and also, I have no choice. I will see how it goes, whether I'm willing or not. And so it's better to be on board and willing when you can't change it anyway. Uh, now here's potentially an even bigger problem than Genji. Uh, Malthael. Insane damage and insanely survivable. Let's see what they do to him. Tormented Souls, definitely his uh, best heroic right now in my opinion. And uh, it's going to be nerfed 20 seconds in the cooldown. That helps a lot. Can't do it as often. They buff Throwing Shade. Cooldown reduction increase from 2 to 4. And I think the original duration was 14 seconds, wasn't it? Let me check. Malthael. Uh, wait. Cooldown 8 seconds. Wow. So when you complete the quest, you can do it every 4 seconds instead of every 6. So it goes from 8 to 6, now it goes from 8 to 4. That's a pretty darn significant buff. Of course it does fight with the uh, trait quest that allows him to have uh, 6 seconds of duration on his trait. So level 4 will be a very competitive tier I think. Then level 13, I also said probably this is the most problematic trait. I've been saying it on stream past few days. Uh, the most problematic level 13. He gets up to 45 armor, uh, hitting just 3 heroes with his trait. Now he can get up to 50, but he will need to hit 5 to do so. Hitting 3 will only have 30 armor. And this change is actually one that I said should happen because it seems like the right amount. I didn't expect this buff kind of to happen uh, but then again who would really stand in five heroes at the same time right like which five heroes would really actually hug Malthael during his trade this is physical armor yes uh, and then inevitable end this is where you remove all the CC uh, but you also lose your trait on everyone. Cooldown reduction. Yeah, I was looking for it, Paprika. <laughs> I don't think, to be honest, I don't think anyone would really stand in. Um... I don't think anyone would actually stand in it. Like five heroes at the same time. Let's just try to live. Manly sounds of disbelief, as apparently that does happen. So, fair enough. Uh, so, in that particular situation, I would be even more survivable. But outside of that... Outside of that, it's going to be a nerf. Uh, Memento Mori will also take uh, a damage nerf. 80% instead of 100, and that seems okay. And this one gets a buff. One second. Hmm. Normally this one gets extended for takedowns, but it doesn't change the base duration. Now it becomes 5 instead of 4, and extended by takedowns. So I think overall a good set of nerfs. One nerf, one buff, one buff, buff, nerf, and buff. I still think Malthea will be very strong, to be honest. Seeing this, it's just he can't super... He can't go super Rambo quite as often. He can't go Rambo as often. And Memento Mori was a key talent as well. But actually he's barely nerfed when you think about it. So I do think, again, 
knee-jerk reactions are one thing and sometimes they're wrong, but my prediction is that he will still be quite strong. Thrall, 5% uh, buff to his uh, passive heal, but they also removed, and this is in the bug fixes, a part where his level 13 actually used to passively buff his passive, which wasn't intended. More on that later. But uh, small buff, tiny buff. This one actually, I'm not sure. This looks like a buff and a nerf. Uh, I don't know. I don't think Thrall is very strong right now. He has survivability issues. I don't think this is enough. But we'll see. We'll see. Zeratul, a nerf to his damage burst rotation. Before he could do like 4041 damage in one second at level 20 with rewind. Now, I don't know exactly what it will get to. Maybe 3800. Guillotine. Now this is an interesting one. Guillotine gets buffed. And it actually comes down to the exact same amount of damage when he has 1% HP. But a better bonus damage at every other HP level. So he doesn't need to be as low to deal more damage. And that's also a suggestion that I had about a week ago, which I think is quite nice. Because dropping to 10% life without the safety net of Taz Dingo is a big risk. So I like this. I like this. Uh, it is only a 30 second cooldown. It can hit multiple people. Uh, I don't know that I want to give up level 1 You Want Axe. And go for the extra spell power W. Mage build Zul'jin. It can be good. Especially if you're hard countered with lots of blind. But anyway. This is a good change. It's a... Uh, the lesser heroic and it's buffed. Let's see how it works out. I'm gonna try it today. And Snare gets a buff. Nice range increase. I felt it was a short range. Cooldown reduction and duration increase. Could be a viable talent now. Especially if you're for example Zul'jin against Cassia. Locking her down removes her physical armor. Can make you win the trade. Raven Familiar will actually now only hit heroic targets. It's where you do a portal. When people go through your portal, they get a raven. And then when they come out on the other side, it does an auto attack. The problem is, it only hits... It hits anything before. So it will generally insta miss on some minion or summon, and then it won't do what you are meaning to do with it. This is not a wave clear talent. No one would use this for wave clear. So, uh, it's nice. It's, uh, it's a buff. Still will never take it. No self-respecting Medivh will. Because uh, they will go for Master's Touch. But the thing is. Master's Touch is not always the best. It's always the best if you complete it. But there's plenty of people who don't complete it. Who would be better off getting Arcane Charge. Or Raven Familiar. I say give it a try. But I also say. I will keep going Master's Touch. Is it pride? Or is it hopefulness? Or is it I know I can complete the quest? One of those. The bonus is so good. And this is a good change for Null Gate. Because right now you cannot justify going Null Gate. When Pylon Overcharge isn't just an amazing teamfight heroic. But it also gave extra shields. They nerfed the shields from Pylon Overcharge on the passive Pylons. But no matter how much they nerfed it. That's still Pylons are more survivable. That's a great thing. And now it no longer does. So that makes Nullgate better in comparison. It's still not great though, I think. It's hard to get value out of Nullgate. And I'm trying not to express in hyperbole here. But it is a good change in the sense that Nullgate is now more competitive. Uh, Probius is also a good ladder hero for Hero League. But he's not highly picked at competitive yet. In fact, he didn't see play at mid-season Brawl. And this won't help very much with that. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. To be honest, I'm, I'm okay with Probius not being top meta. Because his playstyle is fairly straightforward and defensive. And while defensive play should exist, 
uh, it's not always the most exciting to watch. I like the, the full aggro uh, by both teams, so I think this is fine. Here's some interesting changes for Brightwing. Brightwing has not had a good role recently as solo support. Only the best teams in the world, or should I say best team in the world, dares to solo Brightwing support, and it requires an amazing level of coordination and team play. And your allies cannot take poke damage all the time because she has no targeted heals early on, especially if you go Emerald Wind later. But this is an interesting change to Pixie Dust. It will only give a 3 second movement speed instead of 4 and it no longer gives 50% physical block charges but it gets a passive 30 spell armor for 3 seconds. Cast it preventively which uh, is nice play, counterplay, judgment, training uh, to, to, to have good judgment of when to cast it to block the most, most amount of damage on your allies. Kind of uh, reminds me of Morales' safeguard now. Morales' safeguard is 25 across the board, physical and spell. Also lasts 3 seconds. This is 30 only spell. Nice theme for Brightwing. She will be the anti-mage support, which doesn't really exist yet. She did have a level 13 talent that does so, but now it's in the base kit. I like it a lot. And now you get the physical armor block at the level 13 instead. instead. And it's not just a few charges. It's during the whole 3 second duration. Very interesting. I like it, and I think it may allow Brightwing to, uh, yeah, be more competitive. It will. She will still have some of the same issues, but it will help. Lucio received a passive healing nerf recently in one of the patches, where he gets, uh, you know, the one to two to three HP tick healing that he does passively was nerfed and he fell 10% in win rate or more but now they're giving back some power to his activatable heal amp it up and uh, to his level 16 up the frequency so you get a little bit more control of how often you can heal with it and uh, yeah how often you can heal wait what is uh, what is e e is switching no let me look, because I don't know actually what up the frequency does. Lucio, 16E, amp it up's mana cost is reduced from 100 to 80, and dealing basic attack damage to enemy heroes also reduces the cooldown of amp it up. Ah. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. This is supposed to be E, right? Ah, healing boost W, but it's amp it up. It is like W and E together, I suppose. Okay, makes sense now. Um, so, okay, a little bit more control over his healing. Nice buffs, and maybe he'll come back. It's a decent buff. Now, Tassadar. Tassadar. 5% less lifesteal on his shield. The buff shield value bonus on the first unlock of his Conjurer's Pursuit equivalent. An extra on the second tier as well. Less damage on his auto attack quest and less lifesteal. Good changes. Tastadar is crazy busted right now. And uh, this is nerf, 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 and buff to shields. That's fine. Uh, some people liken Tastadar to the bunker of Heroes of the Storm, as uh, in StarCraft, bunker got changed a lot. <laughs> Always one uptick, one downtick, one uptick, one downtick. Too strong, too weak, too strong, too weak. Uh, yeah, so I'm happy with these. I like that Tassadar has a place in the meta, but I don't want him to be uh, at the table forever. Yeah. Because he slows down games. That's my reason for it anyway. Other people may disagree. Uh, Uther, we hope for some nerfs. Uh, he gets a buff to his Hammer of Justice level 1, which arguably is the least picked. During the Super Double Support meta a month ago, we saw Uther Lily almost every game at Grandmaster Hero League. And this one was popular because he's second support. Uh, but now we almost never see it. I picked it yesterday, I lost. Um, <laughs> there were some other issues like disconnecting uh, Zero Tool player. But it is a good talent. It's strong, lots of stuns, and it gets buffed. 
Uh, this one gets buffed. I like it. It probably will not beat Holy Fire because it offers Wave Clear. But yeah, that makes it good that this one gets buffed because it almost never sees play. Yes, exactly what I counseled from 75 to 50. Very happy that they chose to nerf Guac Guacamola. 75 to 50. Makes sense. He has a 50 armor trait at level 20 and 75 at 7. It was opposite world. Uh, so it's going to be 50 now. And this also now allows Guac to have synergy with the level 20. Which is double stack of devotion. So it can actually be 75 armor with that. Uh, it makes a lot more sense. It's like what it was meant to be. Benediction was on the 40 second cooldown, which actually really surprised me. It seems really short and now it's 60. Good change. And I think this brings Uther much more in line with what he is meant to be. Great changes, in my opinion. Oh! Oh! My diva! My poor, poor diva, what did they do to you? 60 HP, regen. Oh! Oh! 1.5 damage off. Seven, what is that? 7% damage nerf to auto attack or so? Isn't it something like that? Yes, 7% and uh, 60 off as well. Three percent nerf to HP. Hit the nitrous. Does less bonus damage. So instead of six hundred damage around level twenty with the boost, she'll do like what? Four fifty. Pity, but to be honest, it's fair. It's fair. The Haka is pretty crazy as well right now. Race car. The Haka does lots of damage. Is very speed, and he can run people down on mount after completing enhanced agility at level one. He takes a roughly 4-5% damage nerf on his basic attack. And Ferocious Stalker. Let's see. Increase the damage of Dark Swarm by 40%. This was 25% spell power, wasn't it? A bit of an oddball talent it was before. Yeah. It was a bit weird. It's like, alright, so... 25% spell power, but what spells does he really have? E doesn't deal damage, you just cast the W, so it interacts with W, okay. And then, uh, Licky Tongue and Isolation. If you don't take Isolation, it's pretty much only having a tiny effect on Licky Tongue, which does like 200 damage, so... You got 25% buff on that, so 50 on that, and on Dark Storm another little bit. It was a bit weird, it's like... Okay, so I'm only supposed to take it with isolation. I thought it was weird. Maybe you don't think so. Um, now it's just a straight up buff to Dark Swarm. And that makes it a little bit more interesting. Because that's where most of his damage is coming from when he comes out of the brush. And it now competes with that minus 10% armor debuff. Yeah? Primal Swarm. And Primal Swarm, therefore, is more of a team play talent. Allowing your whole team to do 10% more damage on them during your Dark Swarm. Whereas Ferocious Stalker will now be your uh, your own uh, soloing damage tool for Dark Swarm. Cool. And it would also make you insta wave clear super fast. Because that's how you wave clear Dark Swarm. And that's the Haka. With, uh, and, and let's not forget 10 second nerf to his global. Now I think globals are very strong in Heroes of the Storm right now. Especially on certain maps like Warhead Junction, Cursed Hollow, Sky Temple. And uh, Falstad, he's still very good. He does get picked on a little bit by Genji Abba, that kind of thing. Illidan the Hunt. And that's why we saw him a little bit less at mid-season Brawl. But he came back and he was very good once again. And so is the Haka. And the Haka, even a better team fighter, Even though he has a worse heroic than Falstad. But uh, I think that's fair, and I think we should see more changes like this because Dark just seems a little bit too good. This will help a little bit. Overall, really good changes, I think. Um, again, missed that Anubrak nerf, but maybe next time. As for the bug fixes, small stuff. Tassara can no longer attack while he's invincible and invis invisible in his E. Uh, yeah, 
that's pretty much uh, the big one that I knew about. Everything else I didn't know about it, so I didn't miss it. Okay, that was the uh, balance changes. I will put that on YouTube as well. And I'll also show you the teaser. There's a teaser for a new hero. Can you guess? Can you guess? Uh, who it is for? Mm. Yeah. Initiate containment protocol five pot immediately. The Nexus has been contaminated. Mobius Foundation report. Result summary. The experiment's unique condition continues to display extensive regenerative properties, causing wounds and even limbs to recover quickly. An unforeseen side effect of the infestation is a unique pathogen that spreads quickly. Contamination of any. I don't know. I have no idea. Oh god, it is Narut, says Sage Liar. It's Kel'Thuzad's launch, infected Kel'Thuzad, says Hans. Stukov, says Nandi Bauer. Mobius Rules, says Fiery Balrog, Stukov. John Cena. I think it's probably Hanzo. That's, uh, that's a fair bet. Stukov or Duran? My name is Duran, Duran, I told you my name. Deckard Kane, possible. Deathwing, another nice one. So we'll see. We will see. Choose a talent. Uh -oh. My web wings descend upon you. <laughs> Burst. Best BFG of the game. And also Siege adds bonus damage to structure and minions and mercs and monsters. So you basically always want to do it when you're not in the team fight. 